All right, dudes, I'm here on a Saturday. I don't know who I'm punishing, you or me, with this, but um, maybe everyone. Okay, let's uh, let's do some triple integrals. Let's uh, try to understand like what they mean and uh, get some tricks for how to successfully do things like homework problems. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, I always like to do a little retrospective of a you know, more innocent time back when you were integrating in only one dimension. That's a one. Off to a great start. Uh, okay, so integrating in only one dimension, you know, you got something like this. Your domain is some like interval, maybe from A to B. So you're like, yeah, your domain is an interval. And okay, you, yeah, you've got some function and, uh, and then you've got some little like delta x and, uh, and you make these rectangles and you add up these rectangles and the height of the rectangle is, um, that's supposed to spell height is uh, f of x. The height of that rectangle is f at x, where x is some point in that little delta x. All right, and then you sum rectangles. Easy peasy. In 2D. Uh, all right, now if we're doing the easy peasy route, you have uh, now your domain is a rectangle. And it uh, goes from B, A to B, and then C to D. And then you've got some like surface above the rectangle, I don't know, doing something like that. And uh, you add up now, now you've got little like delta A's, like little delta areas, and you are adding up these columns. Uh, so yeah, and your now your height, the height of that column is all right. You pick some point x y and delta a, and then the height is f x y, and now you're you sum columns, rectangular columns. Um, all right. So what? Like what are, what's going on when you have a triple integral when you're integrating in 3d uh well i don't know how to draw jack in the fourth dimension so let's just look at what our domain is like so in 3d um our domain is going to now be a box um, so yeah, the box maybe it has X values from A to B and Y values from C to D and Z values from, I don't know, uh, E to F. And, uh, that E looks poorly placed. Let's see, should I do it like up here? I don't know if that's any better. Anyhow, uh, all right, so our domain is a box. And, uh, and okay, now instead of a delta X or a delta A, we've got this like, um, take a little delta V little like change in volume and uh so yeah now domain is a box 
And now somehow in the fourth dimension, you've got some, uh, what do we call it? Um, you you uh, sum a four dimensional uh, hyper rectangle, I think they call them. Um, where the height of that hyper rectangle, I'll put height in quotes there, is all right, f of x, y, and z, uh, where x, y, z is some point in that little uh, volume. Um, hyper rectangle uh, not pictured. So, okay, even though we can't draw a picture of, say, uh, you know, a triple integral, because um, really we're looking at some four dimensional volume, we can at least, uh, I guess, generalize the techniques. Um, and then I'll come up um, kind of at the end, I'll say like one way of maybe interpreting what a triple integral is that doesn't necessarily involve going into the fourth dimension. Um, Let's just uh, say that um, if you want to do take a triple integral, your best case scenario as a 254 student is um, your uh, is the domain being a box, a yeah, a rectangular box as opposed to some general domains like we've been like we saw with uh, integrating in two dimensions over a general domain. Yeah, dudes, I'm going to do that in three dimensions. Uh, so yeah, best case scenario is your domain being a box, then if it's like this box up here, um, you would have some function f of x, y, and z. And then you could say integrate first with respect to x, and it's just from a to b. And then integrate again with respect to y, and that would be from c to d. And integrate again with respect to z, and now that's going from e to f. And really, like, if this is what you've got, um, just kind of using the same techniques. It's like, all right, well, now anti-differentiate first with respect to X and plug these values in. Now, and then anti-differentiate with respect to Y, plug values in. Finally, anti-differentiate with respect to Z, plug values in. Um, like, you can, you can do this. So just, if this is what you've got, um, count your lucky stars, integrate away, and, um, switch order of integration with abandon. All right, so that's the best case scenario. Um, in order to kind of uh, explain how to do some problems. Let me first, uh, you know, harder problems where you're not integrating over a box. Let's start by, um, I'm going to say, find the volume of a box the hard way. And the hard way is to do a triple integral. Um, but just like the double integral over a region where if the, if you're just integrating the number one, that gives you the area. Okay, integrating a volume just with one over one gives you the, um, gives you the volume. So um, if you just have one and you're integrating that, that's your function. So I guess, uh, yeah. So if that's your function, then um, I want to draw a picture and say like, oh, how would we like convince ourselves that the triple integral is the volume from a picture? So I guess I'm going to spend some time redrawing the picture I just drew on the other board. 
let's see, D, oh, I still have to, all right, A, B, I guess I've just, it's like I've got to decide. Mm. Here, let's make E down here now, this time, E, F. Okay, so, uh, so, all right, let's find the volume, but like, let's think kind of calculus, calculus wise about getting the volume so that later when we have a general region, we'll kind of know what to do. Um, so first I might think, all right, um, I really like, as for reasons you'll see later, I kind of like to integrate um, with respect to Z first. So you do that, you've got like one times some little DZ, which is like, some little vertical strip. Um, and if you're holding X and Y constant, then, um, and you're letting Z change and you're like adding up all these Z values, that's gonna be your integral um, from E to F of um, one DZ. Uh, okay. Now let's integrate with respect to y. So now we're saying, all right, we've got our, um, we've got this line. And now we're kind of like adding up a bunch of lines. Now we're letting y change. And um, we're going to get like a surface or yeah, a surface here. So like, I don't know, you multiply a line by a little dy. And now you're adding up, yeah, these lines times dy. Uh, and the y's are now going from c to d. And now, OK, you take these surfaces, and then you like multiply by a little dx. And now you like, you know, add up all of these surfaces, and you're uh, going from x equals a to b. And that'll sweep out the entire box. Um, okay, but obviously you would never do that in real life. If somebody gave you a box, you would just multiply length times width times height. Um, but okay, what would you do if I asked you to find the volume of like a general region though? Um, it can be a bit much. Okay, so we're looking at a general region. Let's maybe, again, think of volume. Um, let's find the volume of a general region. So maybe I'd have a, let's start with an example, like find volume, uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, and closed by, uh, by what, the plane, uh, what plane did I have in my notes? Oh, yeah, this is, maybe this one was from your book, Z minus, Z equals 1 minus X minus Y. And, um, and the, um, the, the coordinate planes. So I'm um, drawing this. So, all right, the, we've got our planes uh, are going to be sides. And then we've got this, like, um, our coordinate planes are going to be the sides. And then we've got this other plane, like, kind of coming in and slicing through. And um, if, let's say, uh, if x and y were 0, then z would be 1. So the point zero zero one 1 is on there. Uh, if uh, x and y are 0, move the x over x is 1. Similarly, if x and z are 0, move the y over y is 1. So we've got this like surface. Like that's our plane um, slicing through that first octant. Um, 
All right, so let's find the volume. All right, so finding the volume, one. And then we're going to triple integrate that one. Um, I'm going to do dz, dy, dx. And then, uh, yeah, let's figure out what the bounds are. So, okay. And think about this, uh, like, all right, you just like have some X and Y fixed and then take some like little vertical piece DZ and now add them all up and um, let's pretend it hits the ground there and then hits the uh, plane there. So we're adding up DZs from, well, the bottom is Z equals zero. And then the top is this coordinate plane. Um, so the height, the, the tallest Z value is going to be a function of X and Y. Or sorry, did I call it a coordinate plane? It's not. The like skew plane here. So yeah, but the height, how high you up you were uh, integrating in Z, that depends on what uh, X and Y you're at. And so the upper part here is going to be a function of X and Y. And uh, in fact, and here it is. It says, oh, yeah, the height is 1 minus x minus y. So you are integrating the height up to 1 minus x minus y. I have a feeling I'm going to want more room for these integrals. OK, um, so now that those are your dz's. And now, all right, we're going to be adding up a bunch of these lines. Um, now we're going to vary y. Uh, you gotta like multiply it by dy, and um, and okay, we're gonna yeah add up a bunch, and it's gonna when we add them up. Adding up all of these lines is going to be a or rectangles, I should say. Yeah, we're adding up all those rectangles. We get that uh, that slice, and how are we? How is our how are our y's changing? Well, okay, we started at y equals zero. That's definitely the first one, and then the last one. Well, it goes all the way up to here, and that point uh, changes depending on what our x value is, um, where we fixed our x value. So really, we it goes up, um, the y values start at zero, kind of no matter what x you're at, but they end at this line. And so we need a function for that line. Uh, in general, this can be quite annoying to find, but uh, in this case, this isn't too bad because that line is um, actually in the xy plane here. And so that's where z equals zero. So that line is what happens when z equals zero, and when z is zero, so maybe I'll say like this plane is the plane z equals zero, and when z equals zero, um, writing y as a function of x, z is zero, y equals one minus x. So we're integrating from zero to the line one minus x. And now finally, we take all these slices and now we're adding up all the slices. We're like multiplying them by a little dx. And then we like add up those little slices of triangular breads to make this wacky loaf. And uh, this is going from zero. Uh, so we're starting at x equals zero. And then the very last slice happens at this point, which is the point, um, it's where x, we decided that this was one, one, zero, zero. That's that point. Mm, that just looks like I put parentheses, ooh, making it worse. Decided that point was one, zero, zero, because this is, yeah, a z and y both equaling zero. Um, I mean, okay, this was zero, zero, one and this was zero one zero could have written that in originally i suppose anyway so we're adding the slices up until one 
Okay. Uh, yeah, this is just, um, this is just tricky and you got to think through how, like how to make the bounds, how to change the bounds of integration or what to make your bounds of integration. Um, let's see. So yeah, what if I had switched the order? Um, this might be like a nice exercise for you to like pause right now and see if you could like figure out how you would maybe switch the order. Like what if I um, switch the order of integration um, to now we're taking the triple integral of one, but um, maybe do dx dy dz. So yeah, you could pause that and see if you could figure it out. Um, for the, I don't know, one or two students who maybe did that, welcome back. Uh, let's switch the order. So we've got... Hmm. Got this happening. Okay. So now we're first integrating with respect to X. So first we're like, I don't know, hold X or hold Y and Z fixed and like take a little DX. And now we are adding up DX all on this line. Uh, here I should do it higher. Sorry, everyone. Oh, man. Wow. All right, let's pretend it's like we're up here somewhere or something. And all right, we'll take a little DX. And then it'll go all the way up until we hit the plane. So we started at x equals zero on that coordinate plane. But then we had to go all the way up till we hit the skew plane. And so now, all right, well, what point did we hit on the skew plane? Well, it depended on what our, where we fixed our Y and our Z. So we got to write this plane as a function of Y and Z. So, uh, okay, let's move the X over and then subtract the Z. This plane is the equation one minus uh, y minus z. Okay, now, uh, oh, son of a gun. Dudes, dudes. I was changing the y's. Uh, sorry, everyone. Wow. Uh, well, sorry. Yeah, sorry to all the confused people out there. Since I've already drawn this, let's, uh, Let's do dy dx dz. Should have just looked at my notes, but I was feeling like cocky, so I didn't. All right, this is dy. Little change in y. Ah, sorry everyone. Many apologies. Um. So yeah, all right. We need to write this as a function. Oh man, you know, a lot of things make sense now. I was like, is this the core? Plane x equals zero. No, it wasn't. Um, this is the coordinate plane y equals zero. Anyhow, okay. So now we're going up to here. This is a function of x and z, uh, and it is going to be. Now we're writing writing y as a function of x and z. So we move the y over and move the z over. This is going to be one minus x minus z. Um, okay, now dx, so now we like multiply this by like a little move in x, and we uh, add up till we get kind of like a horizontal, like triangular plane. And now, all right, where these uh, lines are, you know, we're like starting to add up like little rectangles now. Where are we, uh, where are we starting and stopping? Well, we're starting on at uh, the first line is going to be at x equals zero, and then the last one is going to be here. So, and where that point is, well, it depends on how high you are. So we need to write this 
line, um, we got to write that line as a function of, uh, so let's see, we have, we are integrating away our x's, we need to write this as a function of z. Um, so, all right, this is the plane, this coordinate plane is y equals zero. And so if y is zero, then that line hitting there, that is z equals one minus x. Okay. No, I didn't want that. I wanted it as a function of z, not as a function of x. Wow, I am priceless today. This, if x, all right, y is zero, we want to write this as a function of z, so this is going to be one minus z. Oh my gosh. All right, one minus z. And yeah, I want to like integrate away, um, or I'm integrating in with respect to x. So like when I plug this function in, the last thing I have is z, like I, I can't have an x up, here, up in here. Otherwise, it'd just stick around after I integrate with respect to z. So, okay. Ugh, yikes. Um, all right, and now we've got these horizontal slices, and so now let's like multiply one by by a vertical slice, a little dz, and then you get a little volume. And now you're like adding up the volumes, and you're starting at z equals zero, and then the last volume you get to is at one. So, yikes. Yeah, I wish I hadn't messed that up so much, I'll be honest. Well. No point in stopping and asking for uh, questions, but I'm sure they're there. Um, okay, what if you had a like more some more general region, like not just flat planes or something like that? Um, here is kind of a general strategy uh, that I think you can use to kind of figure out. I mean, uh, let me just say the the game here is really figuring out your bounds of integration, if you couldn't tell, is like, okay, you've got some domain, how do you find the bounds of your integral? That is the name of the game here. And um, like, if I just gave you a triple integral and I gave you the bounds, and you're like, all right, I can do this with the techniques I currently have. The, the new stuff is really, yeah, really, thinking of these bounds of integration. So, all right, let's, um, let me mention a bit of a general strategy. Let me see this, I'm like, general strategy, here for the rescue. Uh, I just think of that dad joke every time I write general something or other, uh, which in math is quite a lot. Uh, okay. So let's um let's suppose here we'll put a question mark then you can decide how general it is. <laughs> suppose uh, that uh, the volume um, or sorry the domain lies between two surfaces. Um, we'll say the first surface is Z. Oh, man. Equals U1 of X and Y. And Z equals U2 of X and Y. So, something like, um, Maybe you've got some bumpy surface here, like that, and um, and then another one down here, and uh, and your domain is uh, this like three dimensional general region. 
Um, General region, here to the rescue. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right, we'll call the region E because that's what your book does. Um, so it's like, You've got this uh, lower bound u1 of xy and this upper bound u2 of xy. And um, yeah, so suppose this is kind of what's going on. You've got your upper surface and your lower surface and you're just kind of getting everything in between. Uh, well, how would you integrate this? Um, okay, so you're given this like these bounds at the at the beginning if you're integrating with respect to z. So if this is what it looks like, you definitely you want to integrate with respect to z. So um, so maybe we're just finding the volume dz, and all right, you start at u1 of xy, and you integrate up to u2 of xy. Um, and now, all right, but how do we find the outer integral? Um, you can do dy dx, or how do I write in my notes? Oh, you know what? Ah. I'm going to trust me from a few hours ago who thought that there's a better way to do this. So if this is our, this is going to be our inner integral. But now here's the, here's the like insight It's like, oh man, you know what? I want to, I want to give myself some room. So I'm going to move this. I wish I had an app, one of these things that just like, let me move it immediately. Like a cut and paste kind of thing. All right. So this was over here. Inner u1 xy to u2 xy 1 dz. That's our inner integral. And now the key is to realize, like, oh, now the like whole integral, like the integral over that general region of 1 dv, that's like the, you know, change in the little change in volume. That that's equal to actually once we do this now this now we just have a function of x and y we just have a regular old double integral from the last time so we've got this all right inner integral u1 xy u2 xy 1 dz and now if we like project the um, this uh, solid, this volume, if we like project down into the xy plane. So maybe it projected down into this domain D from the double integral times. Um, all right, now, this is just a function of x and y. And now we're integrating over the region D, dA. So I guess the general strategy is uh, if you are comfortable with finding double integrals over general regions, then after your very first, if you can like, if you can say for sure, oh, I know for a fact that my volume lives between two surfaces. Here, the surfaces are like functions of X and Y, so they're heights. But you know, if you could change it accordingly, if you had some function uh, of Y and Z bounding your, uh, your two regions, um, or a function of X and Z bounding um, like two surfaces, basically you could have like vertical surfaces or horizontal surfaces um, doing the bounding. In this case, we've got two horizontal surfaces. But the point is, if you like are given, it's like, oh, okay, my volume, it's between these two surfaces. Okay, now make that your inner integral. And then you say, all right, now I just have a double integral over a region. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, I mean, double integrals over general regions um, are not uh, like the most fun, but they maybe seem more doable. So this might be helpful, a helpful way to think about going through these problems um, as opposed to my way of like really thinking like adding up Z's and then adding up Y's and then adding up an X kind of thing. You could think of it this other way where you take two surfaces, make that your inner integral, and then project into the plane that you um, are like integrating the plane that you're not integrating through. Um, like, okay, you're integrating with respect to Z, so now you um, project down to the X, Y plane. But if your surfaces were in terms of X, then you would project into the Y, Z plane, the domain. I hold out some hope that that spiel will make sense if I do an example. So, um, oh, maybe I'll just write the words that I wrote in my notes here, which um, here I said, I say now, check out the projection uh, of the domain E in the xy plane uh, and do the double integral over that region d okay so let's do an example. Um, find the volume of the region bounded by z equals x squared plus y squared and z equals 4. All right, let's draw it to get some intuition. Uh, I kind of know what this looks like at this point, but um, you, you know, if you went to GeoGebra, um, you might see that it's going to be like a parabola and a parabola. And then it's going to be the Z equals four is a that's a plane. That's a horizontal plane. Um, oops. So yeah, this something like this is what it looks like. Um, all right, that's, so it's getting like, you've got this uh, kind of in the lower half of a watermelon shaped region and then it's getting sliced at Z equals four. All right, so let's uh, find the volume of this region bounded by these, um, by this, uh, Paraboloid, that was the word I was looking for. The paraboloid in the plane. All right, well, um, that region is bounded by two surfaces. The lower part of that surface is Z equals, or of the volume, the lower part, the lower bound is Z equals X squared plus Y squared. And the upper bound is the plane Z equals four. And so, yeah, uh, the inner integral is going to be the integral from x squared plus y squared to 4 of 1 dz. All right, so then the, um, you know, general strategy commands us to uh, take the domain, the like general region, and project it down into the xy plane. And if you do that, uh, if you like smushed it all down, you really are gonna get this uh, 
and this circle here and everything inside of it is the domain D. And that circle is going to be, uh, it's basically, I mean, you want to find basically all X and Y values that produce something in the, um, in the region E. And uh, the maximum, as big as X and Y can be, is um, hit, where it hits the plane Z equals 4. And so this circle is actually the circle X squared plus Y squared equals 4. So, okay, so now you've got this like inner integral, which is some function of x, y, and now you're integrating that function of x, y um, over the region D. So now I'm looking at the x, y plane. This is a circle of radius two, uh, not of radius four, although it's certainly tempting. Lord knows I've been tempted. Um, so, uh, but yeah, it's a circle of radius two. And um, all right, now you wanna integrate this. Well, you've got some options. Uh, I, I don't know, For I like to, I would integrate this first with respect to y. So I would change the y's. And remember to do this, you gotta like find an equation for the top and the equation for the bottom. Um, I feel like we did a circle example. Um, in the double integral general region. At the top, if you're solving for y, this is going to be y equals the positive square root of 4 minus x squared. And this bottom is going to be the minus square root of 4 minus x squared. And so the like middle integral is going to be, um, all right, let's just got the first one x squared plus y squared up to 4 of 1 dz. And now we're integrating that function from minus square root of 4 minus x squared up to positive square root of 4 minus x squared dy. And then, okay, now you've got all, you've got a slice and now you want to add up all the slices and uh, your first slice is at x equals minus two. And then your last slice comes when x equals two. So the outer integral is just going to be from minus two to two. And then you've got the rest. 4 minus x squared to 4 minus x squared, x squared plus y squared to 4, 1, dz, dy, dx. <clears throat> yeah. So I guess the reason why I like integrating first with respect to z and then y or x is because uh you know we're used to thinking of these surfaces in 3d as function like it, it's we've often have written them as z equals some function of x and y and so all right i like um thinking of it that way as opposed to converting fr uh, from functions of x and y to functions of y and z uh or functions of x and z so yeah so I often think of these volumes as being bounded by functions of z. And then that's also why I like to have the second uh, integral. Like I like to integrate with respect to y first. It's because, well, I'm used to writing up, you know, I'm used to writing things as functions of x. You could like rotate your head and think of the circle as the like right side of the circle being a function of y and the left side of the circle being a function of y. But that's not how I've been doing it most of my life. And so so that's why I like to integrate with respect to y next, and then finally integrate with respect to x. Um, but yeah, but that's just me. And some problems really demand that you integrate with respect to one variable first, because like that's really just how it's given to you. Um, but yeah, 
you could switch the order of integration on this and I think that might be like an in class problem. <laughs> so I'll have you I am thinking in class i'll give you the same region, but then ask you to integrate in a different order. Um, okay so the final piece this final step I want to say uh, one. Um, maybe just a uh, natural or maybe a, a physical a maybe i'll say a physical uh occurrence is that too many r's one will never know a physical occurrence uh of a triple integral here's where you might find one in the wild um well it's a like mass from density no oh, i'll just write it correctly mass from density so um so if you have a function f x y z that represents density uh like density of a fluid uh for example so this is something that yeah we have we have formulas that say oh well if you like go down far enough in the ocean like uh usually density of the ocean is just going to be a function of z it turns out but um but that's okay it's like all right you've got some function that represents density uh then all right if you've got some like three-dimensional blob here that you're um that you is your domain and you've got your little like delta v then the density density times volume gives you mass uh because density is like your mass per volume um and like so it's mass per volume um so like f of x y z dv or maybe i'll write like delta v actually that's what that is at delta v uh this is like that multiplied together that's the mass in the little box and if you integrated all of those delta v's in all three dimensions so if this is your region e you integrate through that region of f of x y z dv that gives you the uh, mass of the blob um so yeah you can uh, there there are ways to interpret three-dimensional uh integrals that or triple integrals that don't actually have you jumping into the fourth dimension to visualize or to kind of conceptualize what's going on so these do like naturally come up in physics um but really if you are given a region and some function integrate away the hard part is always um finding the bounds of integration um so like in all of these problems, okay, it was like, I was very focused on finding volumes just to like motivate the fact that we're finding how to find the bounds without worrying about what our function is. But say in this problem, well, maybe you want to integrate instead of one, some function of X, Y, and Z. Okay. Uh, these almost always 
turn out like hairy very quickly. So I actually think most of your problems are going to be, um, I'll ask you to like set up the integral correctly, um, but don't bother trying to evaluate it. Um, okay, very, very last thing I wanted to say. Um, and this just said, if in general you have some function f of x, y, and z, and maybe you integrate with respect to z, and then with respect to y, and then with respect to x, that um, in general, the bounds on this first one, it'll be some function, I'm going to call it u1 of x and y. That just in general, if whatever your first integral is, your inside integral, the bounds are going to be a function uh, that's going to be u2 of x and y. Are going to be a function of two variables. The middle integral, this is going to be a function of one variable, and it's going to be the, so your inner integral is going to be the function of the variables that are left. This is going to be a function of y and the x. Here, your middle integral is going to be, the bounds are going to be a function of the variable that's left, which is x. So this is going to be um, like g1 of x and g2 of x. And then there are no variables left. So your outer bounds, they better be numbers on the outside integral. Well, uh, hats off to you if you are still watching. Uh, yeah, we'll see how class goes on Wednesday. Later, dudes.